What's up, beautiful? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Lisa May, and this is Thinking Beauty, home to women who aspire to be smart, healthy, happy, and informed. Before I jump into today's video, I want to first apologize for being away for so long. I got a project in my nine to five and it just really consumed my focus and zapped my energy. I had originally wanted to do this video around Valentine's Day because I know it's a time we tend to come down hard on ourselves if we aren't in relationships. And I wanted to offer some encouragement and some tips to counter that voice that might have been dragging you through the mud. <laughs> so I apologize, but I am here now and I still wanna offer you some encouragement. So without further ado, I wanna share seven ways to love yourself more. The first way to love yourself more is to take time to heal. The first step to loving yourself is accepting yourself. For a lot of us, our childhood experiences could have negatively shaped or influenced the way we see ourselves. In order for our parents to teach us how to behave, we could have often been criticized or reprimanded, which could have left us feeling inadequate. Then, as we got older, our own adult experiences could have compounded on that, giving us a strong subconscious rejection of ourselves, where we feel like we just aren't good enough. And that's on a slight or at best scale. A lot of us have experienced and endured much more traumatic encounters. So it's really important to take time to heal those parts of ourselves. And the more trauma we've experienced, the more time we should give ourselves to turn that outlook around. Personally, I think the first step to doing this is to seek God, earnestly and persistently, aggressively even. You know, it's funny. I started my journey to healing when I started this journey of thinking beauty. Now, I was nowhere near interested in healing as I was in executing on all these ideas around this channel. I thought I was about to be filming workout videos, traveling around the country to interview all these amazing women, writing blog posts on things happening in the world, tying it to philosophy and psychology and all these things. But God tricked me. <laughs> Because Thinking Beauty started out as a blog to demonstrate what it looked like to take extraordinary care of your mind, body, and soul. I was taking care of my mind and body, no problem. But the part I kept getting tripped up on was the soul part. I was praying and meditating and journaling and all these things kept coming up for me. And they were things I couldn't skate past. They were things I had to address. Now, I won't share what my particular issues were, but I'll tell you one of the biggest ones was realizing I had a victim mentality. I would constantly point the finger at other people. You know, it was his fault this didn't work or her fault that things didn't go as planned. It was always someone else for why I couldn't or wasn't doing what I needed to do. So I really had to take this attitude to God and work it out. You know, I would always start my prayers out in meditation sessions by asking God to purge my heart and soul. And I meant it. And he did. And let me just say, <laughs> let me just say this. If you decide to do the same, please note that when you ask God to do this and he does, it will not look like what you think it should look like. You'll think because it's God, it's going to look pretty and smell like roses and magically you no longer feel the same or have the same issue. And that is not how it happens at all. How it happens is God will give you experiences to work through almost like tests to pass. He'll give you opportunities to recognize where you're falling short and how you can do things differently the next time. I just really want you to be aware of this because if you aren't paying enough attention or have enough discernment, you'll think that these are attacks or you'll let it discourage you when really it's meant to empower you and grow you. So yes, seek God first and really seek him and stay committed to the process. Then seek therapy. Now I know I've said a lot, but this last point is probably the most important. And that is do not rush the process. <laughs> Cause if you rush it, you're just prolonging it. The second way to love yourself more is to learn to see yourself through God's eyes. When you see yourself how God sees you, you won't be able to help but to love yourself. Psalms 139 says God formed us in our mother's womb and that we were fearfully and wonderfully made. And if we love God, we love his creation. And it's important to recognize that we too are God's creation, just as much as the sun, the moon, and the stars. Even more, the Bible says that we were created in God's image. 
when we truly recognize that truth and the significance of that truth and fully accept it, a healthy self-love born out of gratitude will begin to bloom inside of us. In addition to recognizing and accepting that truth, a way to see yourself the way God sees you is to see what he said about his creation in scripture. So here are some scriptures that will help start you on that path. Now, while these may start you on that path, I personally think it's important for God himself to give you scriptures that show you how he sees you specifically. In order to do that, you have to spend time with him, going to him in prayer, pouring out your heart about how you yourself see yourself, then allowing him to download a word or a scripture into your spirit. And once he does, carry that scripture with you everywhere you go, meaning in your heart, read it every day, meditate on it and look for the affirmation of it in your everyday life. You know, Lima Gabui, the Liberian peace activist, said God gave her the scripture of Isaiah 54 and she stood on that word and that promise. And if you look at her journey and all that she's achieved so far in her life, you'll see that God kept that promise and those things manifested for her life. And I'm sure they, they still are. So seek God for your own specific word and scripture about how he sees you. Then stand on it and your self-love will blossom and blossom and blossom until you have your own personal garden of Eden. <laughs> the third way to love yourself more is to embrace your imperfections. It's difficult to fully love ourselves when there are parts of ourselves that we harbor hate or resentment for. Whether it's our big feet, <laughs> our height, our hair, our smile, whatever, you know? We all have physical makeups that we don't like or we're insecure about. Insecure about. But it's important to love those parts of ourselves just the same, if not more, than the things we take pride in. Because the resentment we have for that one thing can pollute our overall self-love because it threatens to grow and grow. You know, we can start out having our self-love tank on 90%. And that other 10% is the resentment we have for our crooked teeth or our big feet. And we end up obsessing over it. And that 10% increases to 20%, then 30%, and then so on. And that one, two, or three things ends up corroding and depleting the love we actually do have for ourselves. And so the way to prevent that is to love on those parts you're insecure about even more. Give them some extra TLC. Speak love and gratitude over them and lavish care on them. I'm not as confident as I would like to be about my teeth and my smile. But when I brush my teeth, girl, I be cheesing <laughs> and be like, you are still so beautiful. And you know, I just send them and myself positive vibes while I'm brushing them. The same with my feet. I used to be so ashamed of my feet because they were so big. Now I love painting my toenails and lotioning my feet. I be like, y'all so cute and soft. Oh, I love y'all. <laughs> you know, it might sound silly, but it allows me to keep from having these insecurities threaten my self-love. And it allows me to appreciate the fact that no one, myself especially, is perfect. And despite that fact, we all deserve love. And also that we all are much more than what we look like. And we shouldn't be defined by what we look like, but rather how we treat others and how we treat ourselves. And let me just say this. It's nothing wrong with changing the things that you can change and want to improve. Just do it with love so that your self-love tank gets fuller and fuller with a genuine and healthy love for self, okay? The fourth way to love yourself more is to take up a hobby that brings you joy. So thanks to Beyonce and Formation and Instagram, everyone and their mama is out here building businesses or building empire. And I ain't mad at it. I called it and I am one of them. But because of this, we are constantly measuring, evaluating, and judging ourselves. Therefore, it's important to take up a hobby that brings you pure joy that isn't attached to any goal. In fact, it more serves as an outlet, whether it's cooking or painting or playing tennis, playing the piano, gardening, whatever. You want to take up a hobby that fills you with happiness and allows you to appreciate yourself and your efforts purely. So for example, my two hobbies that I love are cooking and painting. I'm trash at both, <laughs> but I genuinely enjoy doing it. 
For me, there's something about sipping on some wine, listening to some jazz music, chopping vegetables, and sautéing them. Like, it just makes me feel good down in my soul. <laughs> Same with painting. I love sipping some wine, listening to hip hop, and painting my heart's desire. Like, I love the process, and even more, I love seeing my paintings around the house. As juvenile as they may look, I love it. I don't care. <laughs> it makes me feel good in my soul, and no one can take that away from me. Although, New York has, because I haven't painted since I've been here. <laughs> but anyway, the point is, you want to do things that bring you genuine joy because genuine joy manifests in self-love and confidence. It gives you that thing, like I said, that no one can take from you and it fills you with happiness. And like I said, joy and happiness breed self-love. So if you have a hobby, indulge in it a little more when the ill start to come on. And if you don't, explore different things until you see what you like and resist the urge to monetize this hobby if you happen to be good at it because otherwise it defeats the purpose unless you pick a new hobby to replace it. The fifth way to love yourself more is to take yourself out on dates. For a lot of people, taking yourself out on a date is scary and people will avoid it at all costs. But a big part of loving yourself is one, accepting yourself and two, resisting the tendency to have other people validate you. And when you wait for others to take you out on dates, you are allowing other people to validate your right to experience life. You really wanna to get to the point where you are investing in your own company, your own pleasure, and your own ability to experience the things you want in life. The more you invest in yourself, the more you appreciate yourself, and the more you love yourself. And you make yourself more interesting to others because you're experiencing things on a deeper level. Because when you take yourself out, you get to experience things fully because there's no one's interest you have to cater to or defer to except your own. You get to follow your own whims and impulses. And this gives you stories to tell and unique perspectives that you can share with others. You know, they'll regard you as courageous because you are doing something many others are afraid or reluctant to do. And ironically, people will wanna be around you and start to join you on your outings. You know, you'll eventually get to the point where you'll have to make time to go out by yourself because your calendar will be so full of dates with other people. So if this is new to you, you know, start off small by taking yourself to the movies when we can, and then, you know, maybe graduate to a museum or a festival. The cool thing is you actually get to meet more people this way because you're more approachable. You aren't beholden to the person you're with, especially if you tend to, <laughs> tend to usually go out with that one friend who was like super standoffish and be cock blocking and hating. <laughs> the sixth way, to love yourself more is to be quiet and be still. You wanna do this because you really wanna get comfortable with your own presence. In order to fully accept yourself, appreciate yourself, value yourself, and ultimately love yourself, you have to get to know yourself. You wanna explore the inner workings of your own mind, hear your own thoughts, feel your own moods and emotions. You really want to get in your own spirit and your own vibe to learn who you really are, what you really believe, and what you really want. And you can't do this if you're always taking in noise and stimuli and input and opinions from other people. If you do this, then my love, you are just a zombie or a puppet. You know, you are whatever someone tells you to be in any given moment. How can you love yourself if you don't even have a self? So you really do want to get to know yourself and get comfortable with yourself. You do this by tuning out every now and then. You know, whether it's one day or one hour or whatever, just turn off the TV, turn off the radio, get off Instagram, get off Facebook, and just flow with yourself. Listen to your thoughts and spirit and act on the things that it's prompting you to do. You know, this is definitely something I'm guilty of not doing, especially as much as I should. And when I do, when I turn everything off and just get quiet, I feel so peaceful. I feel so relaxed and I feel so confident. I don't feel rushed or inadequate, like I'm not doing enough or whatever. I just feel like I'm right where I'm supposed to be. And one thing I've definitely learned about God and continue to learn, when he speaks, 
he's quiet. He's also a gentleman. He's not gonna scream at you. He's persistent, so he'll keep showing you something until you peep it, and he will infiltrate the noise, but he's quiet. So the more distractions you have, the harder it is to hear him speaking. So make it a point to get quiet and be still, whether for an hour, a day, one day a week, whatever. The seventh way to love yourself more is to resist the pressure to whore yourself out on social media. Okay, this is probably my favorite one and probably most controversial and difficult one <laughs> because business seems to be done on social media these days and social currency is king right now. But when we're talking about loving ourselves, it starts with accepting ourselves then appreciating ourselves, and then valuing ourselves. Personally, I think in order to create value for yourself, you have to be selective and intentional about how you market yourself, how you present yourself. I spend a lot of time on Instagram, a problem in itself, to be quite honest. But I noticed that the more I see a particular thing, the less impact it has on me. The more I see the same person, the less special they become to me. So for example, I discovered a girl on Instagram who has some amazing reels. The first time I saw her reel, I was blown away. Like I engaged with it, I shared it, the whole bit. But then because of the algorithm, I kept seeing them. And the more I saw them, the less appreciative I was of them. I noticed the more I see the same people posting on Instagram, the less impressed I am with them, especially when I see their marketing tactic at play, which is speak to my pain point so I buy into whatever you're selling me. The problem with that when it comes to self-love is you are constantly reminding me of my pain. Personally, I'm at a point now where I just wanna see the people who are posting dope stuff just because. People who are showing me the final product of what they created or content creators who are bringing me along for their journey. And honestly, even that is getting a little old to me when I feel like they're desperate to be in my face so I remember them and support them. For a minute, I found myself succumbing to this pressure. I felt like I needed to post every day so I can be a content creator and influence people. It honestly made me feel like I wasn't living life for myself but rather for the acceptance of other people. And like we said earlier, that is not how you create self-love. You create self-love by, again, accepting yourself appreciating yourself and valuing yourself. So create that self-love by first recognizing your value, then increasing that value. Don't overproduce or overmarket yourself. Set trends instead of following them. In a nutshell, I think if you stay true to who you are, what you believe, and what your goal is and be protective of it, you'll create an increased value for yourself. Instead of you know stressing yourself out, trying to post every day, focus on creating something really dope and compelling. Instead of reminding people that you are there, show up in a monumental way so that they already know you're there. You know, create a little mystique about yourself so people wanna see who you are, what you do. If you do this, I'm willing to bet you'll have a greater impact. I know it's hard, but but seriously, resist the urge to whore yourself out on social media, whatever that looks like for you. Increase that value and you'll love yourself more. And as a result, other people will love you more. Instead of you having to remind them you're there, they'll come looking for you. I truly believe that. So yes, beautiful, those are my seven ways that you can love yourself more. Um, I hope that they were helpful. I hope that you found value in them. Um, if you have like some suggestions for me, please feel free to share them with me because I am still in the process of loving myself more. Like I always say, we're in this thing together. So yeah, until next time, beautiful. Lisa May here saying peace, love, and blessings.